All right, folks, we're here making another video today. Today, we are in my hometown of Huntsville, Alabama at Maple Hill Cemetery. As a matter of fact, we're just a couple hundred yards from my very own family plot. I was doing a little research on odd graves in Alabama, and I ran across this, and I saw Maple Hill. I came and found the grave, and I could not believe how close it was to my own family plot, like I said. Today I'm going to tell you the story about a man from Huntsville who went to school with some of my, my own kinfolks. They never knew him, but he's in their yearbook. This man was a professional wrestler, a con artist, an FBI fugitive, an attempted murderer, Ties to the Reverend Jim Jones. Ties to the Green River Killer. And it's just almost an unbelievable story that no one talks about and I have never even heard about here in my own town. I'm Big Bake on the Move. I do true crime. How do I not hear about this? Y'all stay tuned, I'm going to tell you about it. This is the story of Jerry Bibb Balasak. He had multiple aliases. Y'all stick around. going to begin this story here in Huntsville, Alabama. Although Jerry was born in Bluxy, Mississippi, he went to Huntsville uh, High School here and actually some of my relatives went to school with him. They didn't realize he was notorious as he was up until I started talking about this story, but some of my kin folks went to school with this guy. So he was a big fella, six foot tall, over 300 pounds. And as I stated before, he had became a professional wrestler. He was what they called a jobber, and he uh, was involved with the likes of Dusty Road and Mr. Wrestling 2. He always wrestled under the name Mr. X. Now he wrestled for just a handful of years from around 1974 to 1977. His wrestling career was cut abruptly short due to a motorcycle accident, resulting in a surgery where he had to have a steel pin placed in his pelvis. With his pro career over, he turned his attention to motorcycles. He actually owned a motorcycle shop. It's at this point he began having an alleged, I'm going to say alleged because this is, a, this is a small town story. Sometimes this stuff gets, he's not so famous, you know, everybody doesn't know this guy's story. A lot of people say a lot of things. Might not have been an affair. He, he began having in a relationship, an alleged affair with a lady named Deborah Kindred. It was at this point that things got really shaky for Jerry as he began to write bad checks, trying to buy automotive parts from overseas. Got himself in a bit of a pinch. So he was indicted on those charges and he faced a trial. Fearing that he was going to go to jail, old Jerry skipped town. He took his lover Deborah with him and her young son and they went on a long ride. Jerry then made things even worse. He assumed the identity of his, of his woman's cousin, a man named Ricky Allen Weta. The couple and their son were known as the Wettas. And now they're hiding out in Florida. So it's while he's in hiding in Florida that the Jonestown massacre takes place. And that is a story I'm gonna do on this channel one day, if I can get down there safely and do it, but not today. But if you don't know about that story, basically Jim, Reverend Jim Jones took about 900 to 1,000 of his followers 
down to Guyana, South America. Long story short, the U.S. government started sticking their nose into his doings down there, and he was very unhappy. And they had every reason to stick their nose in his business, by the way, because what he was doing was very criminal. And what he had done was very criminal, in my opinion. And they stuck their nose in it. And upon doing that, he had his followers mix up a big batch of, I think it was cyanide laced. Uh, I'm not going to use the brand name, but grape flavor drink of the cool variety. Use your imagination there. I'm not getting myself in trouble putting somebody's name on something. And kids were injected with it, forced to drink it. And I think about 900 people passed away. So it's at this time news reports all the people were dead in Jonestown and Marjorie Balasak who is Jerry Bibb Balasak's mother is looking through a life magazine and she sees her son laying there dead along with his wife and uh, her child she reports it the state of California so all the bodies were delivered to Oakland California from the Jonestown Massacre. So when Jerry left on the run, he left quite a bit of debt behind him in the form of credit cards. I think somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars. We're talking late seventies. It's a lot of money. Okay. I'm not saying her intent was to get a body for insurance money. But she had in Jerry insured pretty good to where she would get some revenue and to clear up his debts and everything if she was to collect on that money. Now before the FBI would deliver a body, they had to confirm that the body was that of Jerry's. Upon looking into dental records and all the things they could to verify, they found out that it in fact Jerry was not one of the victims from Jonestown. This infuriated Marjorie. She claimed it was and they wouldn't give the body back and it was her son and she was pissed off. Jerry's mother would pass away having never collected that insurance money. And this is her grave right here. A tree, I was up here yesterday. This tree literally just fell. We had a freeze last night. And that is Marjorie Balasak's grave, November 21st, 1920 to May 23rd, 1983. She was buried right here just a few years later, never having any closure. And of course, his father's buried there next door. I guess his name was Coleman, a master teacher, January 4th, 1917, October 30th of 68. The story goes on. Before she passed away, in her defiance of the state of California, she came right here next to her own grave where Coleman was already buried and she put a marker up for Jerry. Jerry Bibb Balasak, born September the 8th, 1955, murdered in Guyana, November 18th, 1978, buried in Oakland, California, May 1979, damn the State Department. She was convinced all the way to her death that he was buried in Oakland, California. Now there are claims out there that Marjorie was able to gain control of one of the bodies and that that body was buried there at that grave. Um, I've talked to people that would know and that is simply not true. There is no one buried there it is an empty grave. Um, like I say, small town rumors, people talk, but that's not a true rumor. Now, it's at this time that Jerry, his wife, and the kid, they moved to Seattle, Washington, where he gets involved in real estate. Like I say, they're known as the Weta family, W-E-T-T-A. It's also at this time that he has a fallout with one of his business partners. Emmett Thompson Jr. And ba Balasak ends up shooting him twice and nearly killing him.
So Balasak was arrested and charged with attempted murder and ultimately he was found guilty and sent to prison. Let's go back to when he shot his partner and he was charged with uh, attempted murder and sentenced to 20 years. When that happened, they didn't know who Jerry uh, Bibb was. They couldn't get his identity and he went through that whole trial as a John Doe. This is where the Green River Killer comes into this story. The same detective that was very crucial in finding the Green River Killer, Randy Molinax, was the detective that discovered the true identity of Jerry Bibb. His wife, Deborah, she then left, took the children, he ended up serving 13 years of a 20 year sentence. So upon being released, very quickly, Jerry was married two more times. Both ended very quickly. One of them resulting in a protection order for domestic violence. Shortly after this, Jerry again changed his name to Harrison Rains. He fled the United States to Central America. And the next anybody hears of Jerry, Rick Weta, many, many aliases, is in 2012. He pops up in Nicaragua. And the reason that he's uh, found there and the reason we're talking about him in Nicaragua is because he was convicted and charged in the sexual exploitation of minors. He was sentenced to 24 years in prison. And the irony of this is that his lawyer, Maria Castillo, was found guilty as his accomplice. Can't make this story up, folks. These are the kind of stories I love to find. You stumble upon them. And I'm sitting here right now looking at his grave. And uh, man, it was not his grave, but you know, him and his mother's tombstones, his mother's grave, father's grave. And uh, these things are in everybody's backyard. You have to just look and you'll find stuff like this. There's a million stories that no one knows about that's just sitting there waiting to be found. In 2013, reports came out that Harrison Rains Hanover, AKA Jerry Bibb Balasak, died from a heat stroke while in prison, serving those 24 years. And like I say, he was there serving time for a conviction of sexual crimes committed on minors. And sadly in this story, no one probably knows exactly whatever happened to his body, whether he was cremated, buried, if he's even dead or alive. You know, the reports out of these countries, who knows if they're accurate? Who knows if other stuff was involved? This guy was scheme. He was a schemer. He was involved in all kinds of stuff. He could be living his best life right now at 70 years old. Who knows? But what we do know is he left behind a heartbroken mother, multiple ex-wife, wives, multiple children, three children, one shooting victim, multiple bad checks, a mountain of debt, and one heck of a story. All right, folks, that's going to wrap this one up. I'm headed to the house. Literally, I live like 40 minutes from here. What do y'all think? You think Jerry's alive? You think he's dead? Y'all hit me in the comments and let me know. In the meantime, I got a video sitting here and one sitting over here. Y'all click on one of those if you like them. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Subscribe to my channel. Tell me if you like me. Tell me if you don't. Either way, tell me something. I'm Big Bake on the Move. True crime. Movie filming locations. Celebrity graves. I'm out of here, y'all. We'll catch y'all on the next one. See ya. Bye.